oil change on an 03 to 05 Cavalier or Sunfire. Also the same if you have a 2.2 Echo Tech L61 in your Saturn Ion, etc., etc., other random foreign cars like Opals and Voxels, whatever the hell else has it. Basically for Cavaliers. What you're going to need for this oil change, and the reason why I'm doing an oil change video, it seems a little ridiculous how to change your oil, right? Some people may have never changed oil. Some people may have never changed oil on an Ecotec and probably have no idea where the oil filter is because it's not a regular oil filter on an Ecotec. We have a canister style oil filter. If we open my box here, see there's no metal casing. It's just the actual filter that goes in a canister that's in the car. Uh, you need some 5W30 oil. Now you don't have to use synthetic, I like to use synthetic, whether it be Edge or Mobile One, I get whichever one is at the best price at the moment, but it has to be 530. It's recommended to use Mobile One from the factory, but you don't have to. You can use regular oil if you want. What you're going to need is a socket and extension. You're going to need a 15 millimeter for the oil drain plug. You're going to need a big boy. This is a one and a quarter inch socket and this is for the oil filter housing which I'll show you soon. It's a really big nut. Also uh, they sell a special tool for this but I actually use this tool for a few things so it just happens to fit so why buy an extra tool when I already have the socket. This fits other things on the Ecotec such as the timing tensioner bolt on the back of the engine. Same size. So one and a quarter inch for that. 15 for the oil drain plug. Uh, get your oil drain pan, get you some towels, your oil, your filter, let's go. Uh, this Cavalier is lowered. See? So I can't get under there without jacking it up. And it's perfectly fine to jack up these cars for an oil change because the oil drain faces the back of the car. So actually raising it up is going to be easier to get all the oil out. So let's go ahead and jack it up first and then we'll go from there. Already jacked up here. On jack stands to be safe not on the jack itself always safer I'm gonna show you the best jacking point if you're gonna work on either oil change or anything under the front end or the engine so come under this is from the front bumper you come on under and you'll see there's this rubber piece so avoid that and right here okay this is solid steel it's part of the subframe okay and I will jack it up from the subframe see my jack stands and it's plenty safe, can hold the weight of the car. That's what holds the engine and everything else to the front end, your subframe. So that's a good place if you're going to work on anything under the front end. Uh, let's go ahead and get to the oil drain. Back there. That's an automatic transmission pan. This is my automatic Cavalier. I do have an auto and a manual, but that's what that is. And that is your oil pan on the left. The passenger side will have your oil pan. Drain plug is facing the rear. Let's go check it out. Let's go ahead and take the oil cap off. It's your oil cap. It should say 5W30 if it's still original. If you have, say, a Cobalt SS or something, Ecotec, um, it'll just say Mobile 1 530 on it. So take that off before we head under. Let's head under with our 15 millimeter socket and take the drain bolt out. Now we're looking from the back of the car, looking forward. There's the drain bolt on that oil pan, that 15 millimeter. We're going to take that off ahead and crack the bolt loose so now you can just take it off. Once you crack it loose you can take it off my hand. Make sure your container is ready and you have a big enough container. And there we go. Now I like to let mine drain for a good 10-15 minutes to make sure I get all the crap out of there. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll be right back. Oils starting to slow down been a few minutes now I'm not done draining but I'm gonna come up here what I do is I buy the five quart jugs which are great to dispose of your old oil and it comes with all five quarts which is usually cheaper but also you only need four and a half quarts is what the service manual calls for on a 2.2 Ecotec so that extra half a quart you can either completely save it for extra oil in case you have to top up later or you can go ahead like me and I use about a quart a quarter of a quart to a half a quart to flush through while I'm still draining kind of flush some of the old contaminants out and that's what I'm going to do right now 
let's open up this fresh oil. There we go. And I just run a little bit through. There we go. Just to help flush it out. That's what I do. I mean, that's not necessary. Just like, you know, you could drain your oil real fast, put oil in it, be done. If it's just a beater or whatever. But I've had this car for 13 years. I just take care of it really well. And I like to flush it through with some fresh oil. So we're going to do that, and then we'll be back when it's time to put the drain plug back. What we can do while we're waiting for the oil to finish draining is, let me go ahead and show you the location of the oil filter on an Ecotec. Now, I have an aftermarket air filter and the tubing for it, which isn't a big deal. Let me show you. Usually, you'll have a box right here, and then you'll have like this piece of rubber tube there. And your stock box... You know, it's uh, it's it's like that. Of course, it's further in, but intake aside, it really it's not a big difference when it comes to actually taking the oil filter out. So, right behind this part of the intake, which would be the same as the stock intake, go ahead and look down here. This is where your oil filter is. We have an external cartridge on this one. Okay, so we're going to use that one and one quarter inch socket to take this off. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and clean that out really good, and then we're going to put our new oil filter in. This is why you need that extension that I showed you earlier. Now also when you change the oil filter, you want to make sure you change this little rubber seal and make sure it's seated properly or you will have oil that leaks out. And also these go bad over time and dry rot, so do replace these. They usually come with most filters. Make sure you get a premium filter that comes with the seal. You need that. So what I like to do is take a paper towel and stuff it in the box to put my old filter in. So I just loosen it up enough with the socket. Be able to start turning it by hand. I'm gonna lay down some more towels here so I don't mess up my clean engine bay here. Okay, just twisting it out by hand. Still twisting. Just, just kidding. I got it. All right, here's our old filter. New filter. Uh, here's that seal I was talking about. This one just happens to be orange. It was a fram, but that's where the seal goes. Make sure the seal goes in these grooves, not in any of the threads, so you will have leakage. So I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. Dispose of that. Now I'll go ahead and wipe the cap out. Get all the old stuff out. And then I'm going to grab it. You can grab, use a set of pliers or a flathead. If you look close at the cap, there's a notch here. Right here. That little notch. You could put in a flathead or a pair of pliers or a pick to get that seal off. So I'm going to grab a pair of pliers over here. And we we'll just use this notch. Get this seal out. I'll get a pair of pliers so that's a little more solid. Alright. I have so many different pliers. Sometimes a flathead just works better, but so you can just grab it and take it right off. That's trash now. So we're gonna take our new seal and put it on. Make sure it goes in this groove here. This groove, make sure it doesn't go into threads. It's going to cause you problems. So put it in the groove. I know it might be hard to see on this one. It's all black. All right, so I'll push it in the groove. Good to go. Wipe it off again. Then I'm going to take this paper towel. I'm going to clean out the actual engine part, the cartridge that our filter goes in. So there's no old residue. So I just wipe that out real quick. Get all that out of there. 
You don't want that old junk mixing with your new stuff. And the new filter just clicks right on. You'll hear it. That's it. Just screw it back on. By hand first, of course. Make sure it's threading in nice and straight. You're not cross-threading, of course, as usual. I know a lot of people get in a rush and cross-threading and then man it causes so many problems. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten this filter up. Now that we hand tighten it. And there's also a little notch on the intake manifold so that you can get an extension in there. So that's really cool. Double check it, I make sure the seal's not sticking out and I make sure everything looks flush and good to go. Let's go ahead and put that drain plug back on. Go ahead and put our drain plug back in here. Very carefully not to cross thread it. Tighten it by hand as good as you can. Wipe your surface so you don't have a bunch of grease and crap on your engine. You're going to take your 15 millimeter socket and you're going to tighten it. Hand tight and a quarter turn more. So I'm hand tight quarter turn. That's all you got to do. If you tighten any more, you're going to have a real problem taking it off next time. So just hand tight, quarter turn, that's tight enough. Good to go. Oil here. I got my funnel ready to go still. Got my fresh oil. Now a lot of these new oil quarts, especially the pod quarts, it'll tell you how many quarts are left. Okay? So it's pretty easy to put in the correct amount. Okay? Makes it real easy. Like I said, it's four and a half quarts is what they call for on these 2.2 Echo Techs. I always have the right handy. Add your oil. This is exciting watching me add the oil. I bet it is. I bet you're super hyped right now, right? Still going. Almost there. Almost there. Now I know I have the exact amount of oil I need in here, four and a half quarts, because I looked at my measurement on the five quart can here, and I used half a quart to flush out the oat oil. So I know I had four and a half quarts exactly left. So I'm just going to put it all in there. Save this container for the old oil. It's good to me. Go ahead and get a paper towel that you just threw somewhere else. Grab this. You have your funnel. Put on your oil cap. You can go ahead and check your oil level once you put your car back on the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and put the car back on the ground and then I'll go ahead and check the oil level because obviously it's not going to be a good level when I'm up at an awkward level. So I'm going to go ahead and put the car down and do that. By the magic of video editing, I'm wearing completely different clothes. So uh, everything's done, it's good, we're going to go ahead and check the oil. So here's your dipstick on these Ecotex right here. We're going to go and wipe it off so we have a clean slate. And I'm going to show you how to read it. You see these three lines? You want the oil to be at this top line here or above. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we're good to go. So you can see the oil is up to this line, so we are good to go. Start it up and see how she sounds. Filters pretty loud on this one since it has that open air filter element. 
So that's normal, just the loud air filter. Sounds good. Oil level's good. Hope you guys like this video. Hope it helps some people out that weren't sure about the canister style oil filters and whatnot. And uh, comment down below. Let me know. Uh, any questions concerning any of this? Or what else would you like to see? You want to see some more maintenance? Uh, do you have any repair questions? Uh, anything. J-body related or not. It doesn't have to be just J-bodies. We work on a lot of stuff, not just J-bodies. So until uh, next time, this is STC Donnie. We'll see ya.